This is Tuscany. Today is the 22nd of December 2014 and the village you can see in front of you is San Giminamo and it's famous for its towers and there we can see them from a distance. Now, should you come here to San Giminamo, you're going to find that parking's a bit of a problem. There are three parking areas here, which are paid. I don't know how much they are, because I've got a camper van, and I had to take my camper van to a place which is a couple of kilometres from, from the centre. Having said that, there was, when I got there, there was nobody there, so I decided I wasn't going to leave my van there. It cost me one euro an hour and instead I put my van well I'll show you there's the town and there's this road here called San Donato and there it is it's parked up there and if you go up there another 800 meters or so you'll get to the camper parking there are signs up saying that no parking for campers over six meters in length but my experience with Italians is they're not very good at measurements and uh, so although mine's well over six meters well, I don't know if it's obvious not but then again I suppose the police do this every day and they know what's six meters and what isn't six meters I was here seven years ago, in fact nearly eight years ago, that was in March 2007 and the first thing you'll notice, if you've seen that film, is that my filming's got a lot better or rather my equipment's got a lot better my filming is just as bad and unfortunately I still have the same speech problem I still stammer other than that, I'll tell you a little bit about the history at the time I didn't know much about it but since then I've been able to read up a little bit and I know more than I did then. So the town was founded around 80 BCE by two people who escaped from Rome after taking part in the conspiracy against the Republic as it was then. They set up two castles here, allegedly. I suppose two houses or something of that nature. And that's how it started. But the name is later. It comes from the name of a local bishop who managed to persuade the Huns not to smash the place up in 450 CE. And he also became a saint. Therefore, Saint Chiminamo. The towers date from the period of fighting between supporters of the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope. And this dispute started in 1075 and it really effectively was finished at the Synod of Rome in 1122. However, here they had long memories and they continued this bitter dispute well into the 13th century and by which time not only had the, the cause of this been settled but I'm sure they didn't know why they hated each other for any other reason than they hated each other. The towers themselves are built to show prosperity, to show wealth and once there were 72 of them in the 13th century there's now only 13. Whereas towers and other places got destroyed by wars, by neglect, by even earthquakes. The reason why they've stood here is largely probably due to the fact that this became very much a backwater after the Black Death, 1348, between half and two thirds of the population died. The town came under the influence of nearby Florence and that put a pay to its economic prosperity. And after that time, things 
probably just either fill in disrepair, but those were well built, stayed up. So there I am, parked on a Tuscan hillside, and so I've just walked into San Giminamo. That was about what, 10 minutes or so. In the 13th century, and there's still 72 towers, the tallest was 70 meters high. I think of the construction required at that time to do something like that. Absolutely amazing. And there must have been, for example, a shortage of building materials of skilled workers. But they were found somehow to do these things. Panoramic point. I'm going to start off with a view of my camper van. Let's go and have a look at this uh, Tuscan countryside from here. I'm going to do this the 22nd of December. I think the temperature I'd say was about what, seven, maybe something like that. Rough guess. It's going to be even warmer than tomorrow. I'm thinking of warm though, so that's that walk here and climbing around this hillside town, which I've only just started to do. This is Via del Castello, and I've seen where cars maneuver here and I certainly wouldn't want to bring my van into a place like this but I don't know what people do, I've got these big ones the thing is you're not allowed to bring your van in anywhere unless you have to live here and even if you're staying here you're allowed to dump your uh, bags off at your hotel but then you've got to take your car out to one of the parking places I think you'd agree, this is an absolutely magnificent square. Symbol of what this town must have been before its decline, which happened so abruptly in 1348 by the Black Death. Despite the roads being so narrow, there are still buses. Although it's a bit wider than the, than the absolute centre. This is a walk around the walls. And that's what I'm going to do before it gets too dark. So it'll be about 16.30 now, I think. So it'll be dark in about half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Now here we have something curious. It clearly says there, walk around the walls. But the sign here is no entry. This used to be a prison, and on the 10th of June 1944, when the front was some considerable distance from here, back then it was at, uh, just north of Rome, Rome was captured uh, only a week earlier, 
and partisans rescued 72 people from various countries who were being held here. Quite an achievement considering the position of San Gimignano. So there we see the cathedral with its Christmas tree in front of it. The cathedral dates to the 15th century, so it's, it's really after the uh, decline, or the sudden decline of this town. So the cathedral is quite a big building. It's been inside. It's been done up. It was done up over the ages. And we also see the lights are out in the main square. And the time's now 1700. But it is the second shortest day of the year. So it's not a surprise it's getting dark so early. There's a place down there that says it is the best ice cream in the world, so I'm going to try it. Magnificent view in the evening, and unfortunately the place that claims to do the best ice cream in the world closes at 5, oh, and there's the bell for 5, so it closes just before 5. But if it's better than Sainsbury's, it's going to have to be really good. It's a very good use for a church. It's been turned into a wonderful shop with all these local products, various types of ham, wine, conserves. You can try things if you want. There we have pasta. Dry tomatoes, which I bought, spices, and huge quantities of wine. Oh, sweets and liqueurs. I really like this type of shop. No. Yeah,